Okay, we're, uh, <laughs> we're reading the latest chapter of Dr. Stone now, chapter 111. It, it starts, perhaps for the benefit of people that uh, pick or, are picking up this series because they heard about the anime, there's kind of a brief refresh here. Maybe it's because they have the occasion to do a color photo, but, you know, we get the, the gist of the plot again. One day, out of the blue, every human on Earth was turned to stone by a mysterious beam. Civilization crumbled, and 3,700 years passed. And now we jump from there to a really brief introduction of the current arc. Our heroes are going to steal the dreaded petrification weapon in this honeybee end style fiasco. And this, I think, is the real purpose of restating the premise from first conclusions. To drive home both how significant this arc is, you know, in terms of uh, just everything that's been going on in the entire series. But then also to highlight just how insane this arc is based on what the actual premise is, based on, <laughs> like, what is literally happening in the plot to, to achieve ends of the significant. I.e., we have our three harem candidates. They've all been dolled up and prettied up, and they're looking great. Uh, Senku is introducing the science earring, telling everyone to get excited, because it's time. It's harem infiltration time. Got a little spread here. So many of these people are just statues right now. But here they are all punching through the stone worlds. Nice, nice. What a great cast the series has built up. Over, a little over two years now. The most beautiful among you will be chosen for the harem from the master's property. It's a big honor, you know. Everyone's here. There's that guy. We're not really sure if he's the master or not. You know, trying to hide out, but doesn't he know that being kind of shy and moe and uh, looking like he's not interested is just going to make him ten times more attractive? Infiltrate the enemy territory, steal the petrification weapon. He has as many hands on deck as possible. So, they overhear the creepy hunter man grabbing a girl. Something far more lovely in hiding. What a creep. Her new husband's complaining, protesting in vain. They're all afraid, though, of this guy's physical prowess. Getting himself killed or turned to stone. Also had friends that are stone. Dirt for five full years. It's all led up to today. We're about to sneak into this harem and save everyone. So, uh, this is a little risky to give away the plan. Because he could just be like, hey, <laughs> if you give me back my wife, I could, uh, I just learned something exciting. <laughs> but I guess it just becomes like, she'll just deny it, and then this guy's already hated, and she's the, the cutie, and I don't know. Anyways, it still seems a little risky to me. But I guess she figured it out. So other girls line up and introduce themselves one by one. Ooh, this is a nice shot. The 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 two depictions of her on this page being so sly and cold and, and determined and resolute to, to solve her plan, and then immediately the switch to my name is Amaryllis. I'm sorry, I get nervous around big strong men. <laughs> Little old me, I feel so bashful, but, but, but I'll do my best. Oh, oh, how powerful. So powerful. So she gets selected like that. This, <laughs> this family's mom running herself out to no applause. Kids hella embarrassed. Kohaku trying to step it up. My funny success is an excitable hacker, hyperactive sort of character. Ooh, okay, so Gen makes a read here. She can't go for Moe Moe, but she can go for Genki Moe. But I don't, I don't know if Kohaku, like, I guess she's pretty Genki, but I would never use that word to describe her. It, it's more that she's, like, some sort of animal. <laughs> she's a gorilla. <laughs> Let's see if she can pull it off. Oh! My name is Koha. That's total Koha. They tell me I've got lots of energy to burn. That's my thing, apparently. <laughs> oh no. So, you can't figure out what to do. 
But in the end, he's like, all right, it doesn't matter how crazy she is with, with that with that body. And he goes in for what, what seems to be some major groping here. I don't know if Kohaku can tolerate that. I don't know if Kohaku can put her dignity out there, sacrifice this much for the sake of the mission. And looking at the bottom line of this page, it really seems like she's about to snap and just murder this dude. Which would be very satisfying. And it would have like a really nice sort of One Piece-esque, nothing will ever ever go to plan sort of feeling where, you know, they, they talk a big plan, they get so much prep, and then Luffy just punches some guy, and then it's just like, alright, well, <laughs> I guess we're just doing this now. Um, but, I don't know, like, so, oh, she grabs his arm, and it looks like she's going to make some move, but then, this other guy, this mysterious man who's really kind of keeping his cool about himself a lot better, separates them with a, a very precise stab of his weapon. So I think he knew what was about to happen. I think this guy's natural warrior instincts recognized that Kohaku was about to uh, separate this this person's inner wrist bones <laughs> in the most horrific way. She she really was ready there to do a, a real multi snap. So I think for her own sake, he's thinking. I don't know. I think he just doesn't want this to happen. Spotted a V, must be the time of year. You really are strong, aren't you? Ooh. Interesting, interesting. So this guy definitely, lots of villain attitude, for sure. Giving off all sorts of villain vibes. But it seems like if he really didn't care, if he just wanted to see Kohaku fall, you know, like, to get rid of her, he would have kind of let her proceed a little more and then just full-on attacked her. Or just attacked her right then and there, and been like, yeah, she's going to break your arm, buddy. Instead, she lets her get selected into the harem. Doesn't mention that she's strong publicly. So I think this guy could be willing to defect. I think he's a little more aware of, of what they're up against than everyone else. And is considering maybe switching sides. Or maybe he's just thirsty. <laughs> Don't really know what you're after. It's not my business. You're playing mess involves messing with the harem I love so much. I'll stop you dead in your tracks. Sneak over and find you in the harem sometime. We refer to a counter, if you know what I mean. Mortal Kombat, or anything, whatever. Okay, all right. This is, this is interesting. We're we're getting this more kind of set up than I thought. I thought it would be like very just boom, 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 you know. But it seems like this kind of harem mini arc. Could be maybe more su substantial than I think. We're kind of setting up a, a little bit of a, an event space, you know, where multiple things can kind of happen. All right. So, meanwhile, during all of this, this is the earring that Senku hinted at in the, the color spread, which I'm not really sure how it fits in chronologically with the chapter, but whatever. Uh, so he's making a copper wild core coil serve as the earring, and I assume this is going to be able to receive radio transmissions, so they'll be able to be in communication with the harem selections. So then the ear, rush us all we got from the wine, same material used for the speaker. Ho ho ho! Gen gets it in one. Our, our multi-time period mashup secret agent Kohaku uh, imagined probably quite inaccurate, but whatever. I thought it was a spread. They've got the earpiece. All right, pretty cool, pretty cool. Nicely decorated to hide what's really going on. Senku giving me the slightest nod to aesthetics. It's a machinery on here. In the middle, we see radio heads, perhaps. <laughs> An integrated chip circuit chip? It's just a rock. How is he supposed to make a chip? <laughs> the batteries here. You can see it. What kind of with that one? <laughs> Remember, he's going to be fan as heck. It's perfect for your earpiece. All right. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Ooh, pretty clever. Thank you cleaning out his ear while explaining this is, is just so hilarious to me. <laughs> 
So yeah, it, it receives its power from the radio waves itself. The radio waves just uh, have the same sort of frequency as the rock, such that it resonates with it and it vibrates, such that the, the frequency modulation of the radio waves will cause the same frequency modulation in the rock, therefore recreating the sound. Isn't that fantastic? Isn't that just miraculous and wonderful? And All right, whatever, we're, we're in there. Meanwhile, Jean Rolina, the star of the harem. I don't know, but the first thing about being cute. Oh, so like instantly, he's not picky at all. Well, he's just got all sorts of types. The mom disappointed. Soyuz, with the, the super accurate throw, hopefully. Chucking it like, over these woods from a cliff. But whatever. Kohaku snags it. No time for testing, so like always it's do or die on the field. Can you hear me, dear Kohaku? I'm coming in clear. <laughs> Strike a cute post. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Why did they let him have the bike? <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, this is so good. She's thinking of Suika. Suika can do some cute poses, that's for sure. This is going over fine. I'm convinced. <laughs> the earpiece really works! <laughs> uh, I like how Gen, of course, can't hear anything from her. It's only a one-directional thing. And yet, he's still terrified. He just knows what he's done. He can just imagine how she's feeling. And give Kalaka the instructions to the earpiece. What's the strategy now? How will they get the weapon? When holding the Petri Beam is that warrior woman Kirisama. The vicious fighter that we saw back during her fight with Kohaku. Walking up to her and taking the weapon is 10 billion percent asking for trouble. Hmm. Kirisama knows how valuable the Petri Beam is. She's, the only time she's not holding it is in that one moment when she throws it to activate it. That moment, right? That's when we strike. Thought it was always going to be one that spotted in midair. Here on this primitive island. We're going to make a drone? Okay. All right. Hell yeah. Up in the air, science reigns supreme. They're going to make a drone. It's the combination harem drone art of all of our dreams. All of our dreams are coming true simultaneously. I don't know what to say. Uh, so my older cousin has a really cool drone. It's like a photography drone. Uh, he had it out last weekend. We were flying it around. It, it really feels like the future when you use it. It's so just insane to see it very precisely and speedily jerking around in midair, following the controls of your, your controller way down below, flying... Mm, kilometers away, looking at things that you can't see with your naked eye. I don't know, it's pretty fantastic. And here in the stone world, they're going to make a drum. Apparently, apparently. I really like the design of the drum they showed here. It has like va major Nausicaa vibes to me. There's something about kind of the, the domes and the kind of exposed... Uh, screws and stuff, you know, that kind of paneling and such. It, it feels very Nausicaa. I always think those sort of designs are cool. Anyways, this looks like quite a fun arc. Making a drone, infiltrating the harem, stealing the Petra Beam, all sorts of crazy stuff going on. And in the middle of that, in the middle of all of this weight and significance and intensity, things like Kohaku trying to strike a cute pose. <laughs> Or or Ginra or Gin Ginralina, uh, explaining that she doesn't know the first thing about being cute. Mm, mm, it's also good. Okay, uh, that's all for now. Let's look forward to the next job.